you're shooting pictures today, chances are you're not using something that looks like this. It's more likely that you're using something that looks like this. I'm Jill Heinerth, and today we're going to talk about shooting with smartphones underwater. If you've recently purchased a smartphone and you've looked at the specifications, you've probably seen something about water resistance. The ratings say things like IP67, IP68, but there's also a more detailed description that comes with that specification. Sure, I can drop this phone in the toilet and recover it or let it splash and get wet in the rain, but Apple and other manufacturers do not approve of you taking this underwater unprotected. That IP rating is more about occasional splashes and getting wet, but also about dust proofing. So if you want to shoot underwater, you're far better off getting some sort of a protective housing. Some people put their iPhones or their other smartphones just in a Ziploc bag or even a purpose-built bag, but obviously those don't have terribly good optics. If you want to do something that looks fully professional, then you're going to need to get a smartphone housing. The good news is that many housings today, like this one, will fit almost any phone and operate with a Bluetooth connection. That means if I upgrade my phone next year, I can still use the same housing. And with this housing, I can have a lot more security about taking my personal smartphone underwater. The way many housings work, like this one, is that they have a unique vacuum system, like this, that I'll attach to the front before I go diving. And then I just pump the air out of the housing itself until I see a green light letting me know that it's secure. Now, every housing is going to be a little bit different, but this one by Kraken actually recommends that I do that about a half an hour before diving so that when I jump in, I'm absolutely positive the housing is secure. Now, if for any reason your phone gets a tiny bit wet inside the housing, that's where that rating, that IP67 or IP68, is going to be really helpful. Like my iPhone 14 Pro can actually withstand, uh, I think it's like four meters of water for a half an hour or an hour, whatever. Look it up for your particular phone. So a few drops aren't going to be a big problem. The next thing you need to do with a brand new housing is to actually test to make sure that it is waterproof. So fill that housing with tissue paper, toilet paper, but not your phone, and then put it in the bathtub or a sink, perhaps with a weight on it for an hour or more, just to ensure that the seal stays sealed. When you open up the back, that toilet paper should be bone dry. After that, your next step is to figure out how to trim the housing. Sure, you can take your iPhone in the housing underwater all on its own, but you're going to get a lot better color and detail by adding some lights or other accessories. Lights are the most important thing though. So I've actually put my housing onto what we call a tray, a support structure. And then I've added a couple of arms to hold some underwater lights. The lights, you want to have them very wide to cover the entire angle of view. You don't want a tiny little spotlight showing up in the picture. You want a nice wash of light throughout the image so that it brings out the colors of the underwater life. But the housing itself, the tray, the arms, and the lights might be a little negatively buoyant, so we need to trim the housing. And what that means is finding out just what we need to do to make it neutrally buoyant, just like our bodies are neutrally buoyant underwater. I'm using these special helium arms that actually have segments in them. And so I can add a segment or take a segment away from the arm to make it more buoyant or less buoyant. You can also get something called syntactic foam. That's a foam made with glass beads. It's incompressible and it's used for deep sea submersibles. You can't just use a pool noodle or any other type of foam because as you go underwater that foam is going to be crushed and the buoyancy is going to be crushed with it. So you have to use something incompressible. 
either some of that syntactic foam or something like this variable buoyancy arms that can be assembled in different segments. So it might take you a little bit of trial and error to get the weighting right, but you want the camera to be pretty neutral, maybe a tiny bit negative, um, but easy to swim around with and move around underwater so you can get some nice, easy and smooth pans and tilts for your underwater video. So after you've trimmed it and you're sure everything's going to stay dry, then it's time to go diving. But before you do, you need to think of a few things about the phone and its settings before you go underwater. Before you put that in the housing, you may need to ensure that it stays on so you don't want any auto lock turning it off. You may need to increase the brightness of the screen if you're in shallow water because the sunlight can make it hard to see the screen on your iPhone. So you'll need to go through your settings and make sure that you've done everything that you can in advance of diving. Like if you want to set up some special Instagram filters for a series of photos, do that all before you get in the water. So it's more a matter of point and shoot or point and roll for video because you don't want to be doing a whole lot of that underwater switching around and trying to find things in the menu system. And some housings might not even allow you to reach your menu system. This particular housing is Bluetooth. So it has an app that goes with it and with the buttons on the back and the shutter button, you can do a series of tasks, but you're not going to be able to swipe and move things the way you're used to when you're out of the water. Once your um, settings are correct and you're probably going to have to set it into airplane mode too. So it's not like buzzing and ringing and doing all kinds of things. Once it's inside the housing, you put it in the housing, do your little leak check if that's available for your housing and then you're ready to go. Once you're underwater, an iPhone or other smartphone can be an absolutely fantastic way to shoot underwater videos or stills because it's small. It's easy to take along. You can get some really unique angles that might be tougher with a larger camera housing. But just remember, go slow, move slow, deliberately take your time and uh, enjoy the underwater world. Now, one final thing, if your phone gets wet inside your housing for any reason at all, when you come out, try and dry it off, shake it off. If it was salt water, then you might need to do a little bit of rinsing to get rid of the salt, but never stick anything inside any of the ports. Like, just like your ears, don't stick a Q-tip inside there. Also, don't just stick your phone into a bag of rice because we're all used to doing that for things when they get wet, but little granules of dust from the rice or rice grains themselves can get into your charging port or into the speakers. There's also some apps that will vibrate the speakers and sort of shake away excess water, but give it time. And if you see a warning on your phone that says, do not charge, my charging port is wet, then do not charge. Give it a wait, give it time to fully dry out. The other thing you want to avoid is actually physically blowing air into any of those spaces. So don't use scuba, high pressure gas, you know, don't use a hair dryer. Don't blow anything into any openings in your smartphone. Just let it dry on its own. I hope that smartphones are going to open up the world of underwater photography and videography to even more people. And who knows, as these IP ratings increase and get higher and higher, maybe sooner than later, we'll just be taking this underwater.